probably the next winner of the San Francisco International Comedy Competition. One of the funniest people I've ever seen in my entire life. Please give it up right now for J.L. Coban. unveiling of King Kong. Uh, I enjoy being tall. Uh, conversation with girls can get a little tedious in bars, though. It's always the same one. Uh, excuse me, me and my friend, we have a bet. Um, how tall are you? Uh, six seven. Jesus Christ, that's tall. Do you play in the NBA? Uh, have you ever heard of the Milwaukee Bucks? No. I play for them. <laughs> I do enjoy being tall. Uh, I had to start shopping at the Big and Tall store recently. <laughs> Put on the requisite pounds to enter that club. And uh, usually being tall is a pretty cool thing in society, you know? It's part of the holy triumvirate, tall, dark, and handsome. But uh, for some reason, uh, Big and Tall stores decide to treat tall men like their genetic experiments gone wrong. Because <laughs> they don't do this in big women's stores. They don't do that. Those stores are all about empowerment. You know, it's nice, the ad campaigns to them. They're like, you're big and you're sexy. And you probably do more stuff in bed than those skinny bitches. <laughs> so why don't you dress like it? <laughs> Lane Bryant, because big boobs never go out of style. It's like, oh, that's cool, that's nice. Glass half full kind of thing. Uh, for tall dudes, it's completely different. It's like, hey man, are you tall? Well, you probably bump your head on shit a lot. <laughs> I'm guessing your posture sucks, and you probably speak in incomplete sentences. So why don't you join your morbidly obese friend at the Big and Tall store? Big and Tall, because the circus isn't hiring. <laughs> been learning things, learning things at the Big and Tall store, been learning other things, relationship things. I learned that there is such a thing as too much celebrating in front of your girlfriend when you get an HIV negative test result. <laughs> you think you're celebrating life, but it's a miracle is not the proper thing to say in front of her. <laughs> I'm guessing the Gatorade shower was a little much, but I was just happy. It's been a weird year for me. Uh, I get asked about my height a lot. The other thing I get asked by people who are blunt and rude is, what are you? <laughs> like racially, what the hell are you? And I tell people I'm half Haitian, half Irish. Anybody else? <laughs> Didn't think so. Uh, that always gets an interesting response from people. Really? That's so weird. How did they meet? <laughs> work. <laughs> and no, my mom doesn't work for the Miami Coast Guard. Uh, but I, hey, you know. But I like to give people a different story, feed into their expectations. I'm like, yeah, weird how those two met. Uh, my mom, working class Irish girl from New York City. My dad, one of 11 kids, grew up in a small village in Haiti. Uh, and then my mom started sponsoring my dad for 46 cents a month. <laughs> Send postcards to her telling her how the school was coming along that her money was helping build. Of course, intimacy was a problem at first, but with the you know, flies buzzing around my dad's face all the time, <laughs> caught his commercial work. <laughs> yeah, but I realized I thought this was going to be the year I blew up. You know, got my own sitcom, some shit. Because in 2009, half black people kicking ass, taking names. I was like, sick. Finally, my people are taking over. That's nice. Because Obama got elected president, and I was like, all right, any day now. <laughs> my bag of cash will arrive. <laughs> and it didn't. It did not. And I blame my father. Because there's a familiar pattern to uh, successful half-black people in this country. Uh, you know, sometimes there are exceptions, like Derek Jeter or Mariah Carey's crazy ass. But hear me out. 
Let's start at the top, Barack Obama, right? Black dad, white mom, black dad leaves, huge success follows. Yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, other examples, Alicia Keys, everybody know who she is? Black dad, white mom, black dad leaves, huge success follows. <laughs> J.L. Covan over here. <laughs> Black dad, white mom, black dad decides to stick around and play dad. <laughs> I've been playing with a purple onion. <laughs> Man, I just wish my dad gave a shit about my career and left. <laughs> Do the right thing, man. But I realized I got jealous of Obama after a while. I was like, damn, that should be me. Why him? Why not me, man? Got the same bio. <laughs> and I realized like I got jealous, but I said, I don't want to be jealous of Obama. Because I can do something Obama can't. I can do a normal job. I think Obama is so dignified, so you know, put together, got his shit so together on another level that he couldn't do a normal job. Like can you imagine Barack Obama the strip club DJ? <laughs> Worst night at the club ever. <laughs> Sitting there waiting for a lap dance and uh, okay, next <laughs> coming up to the stage is a young woman named Bubbles. <laughs> now look, Bubbles is a single mother of two. You came to this city to become an actress. Oh, hold on, Joe, I'm almost done. <laughs> she began using crack cocaine and had a baby's like it was going out of style. But tonight, gentlemen, tonight, Bubbles dances not to feed that crack addiction, but to empower herself sexually. So please, when she asks you for money, reply with that time-honored creed, yes, we can. Let's get down here, everybody. Thank you.